Abraham experienced it and his name was changed. Sarah experienced it and she got laughter. Moses experienced it and he went from hiding to leading. David experienced it and became God's beloved. Elijah experienced it and brought down fire. A savior has come to you. A healer has come to you. A deliverer has come to you. A redeemer has come to you. You will not miss your miracle. Now, it's your time. Experience the supernatural in this month's Global Crusade themed The Glorious Visitation of Christ happening live in Ghana. God is ready to move. Also featuring our ministers, church workers, and professional conference team enabling grace and power for the end time harvest. The youth aren't left behind as they are moving upward to higher heights with the Impact Academy. Join us from the 28th to 25th of April at Independence Square, Osu, Accra. The word of power would be broadcast worldwide through satellite, radio, TV, and the GCK social media platforms. We will be blessed by glorious music from choirs around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for our Bible study. Thank you for your faithful people who are coming every time. Thank you for our newcomers who are here today. We pray, Lord, you open the windows of heaven and you shower your blessings upon everyone in Jesus' name. But the benefit of the world, the profit of study, will be a possession in Jesus' name. Amen. I will pray that everything that ought not to be in our lives, from the, from the least to the greatest, the power, the power of the world, will sweep everything away in Jesus' name. Amen. Open our eyes of understanding. Amen. Shed your light on your word as we study tonight. We thank you because we know you have answered. And you are going to bless everyone. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Yeah. God bless Ali Mosho people. Yeah. Give me Ali Mosho. Amen. Yeah. As we continue in our study, we're coming to John chapter 4. And we're looking at the concluding verses tonight. That is John chapter 4, verses 43. All to all through to 54. Look at chapter 4, verse 43. Now, after two days, he departed thence and he went into Galilee. And then it goes on to say in verse 47 And when he heard talking about a noble man that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come and heal his son for he was at the point of death and then look at verse 50 it says and jesus said unto him go thy way thy son liveth thy son liveth sickness will be rolled away mountains will be taken away and the pronouncement of jesus in our lives will be fulfilled in jesus name and the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, the servants met him and told him, Say, tell me out loud, thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. At the seventh hour, what's the time over there? At the seventh hour, the fever left him. Everything negative will leave your life. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. And himself believed, and his whole house himself believed, and his own house. As we look at the study tonight, the title is The Unchanging Ministry 
and miracles of Christ. The ministry of Christ, the miracles of Christ, unchanging, unchangeable, constant, the same yesterday, today, and forever. As we come to this passage, we come face to face with Christ. We see him at work. We hear his word. We behold his wonder. And we learn of him in the world. Christ, our Savior and Lord, is still alive today. He was alive before he came to this world. Eternal. He's still alive after he left this world. Because it's eternal. He went to the very throne of God. And he's alive today. He's alive here. He's alive there by your side. Because he himself had given us the promise. Look at Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. We're reading from verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. You see there tonight? I said, you see here tonight? What two or three are gathered together in the name of the Lord to study his word, to hear his word, and to pray to the Father in his name. And we're gathered together for the purpose that he came to this world. He said, there am I in the midst of them. Thank God is by your side tonight. That same Jesus Savior is there tonight. That same Jesus Healer is there tonight. That same Jesus Deliverer is there tonight. Matthew chapter 28. And I'm reading from verse 20. Matthew chapter 28. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am, tell me, with you always until when? Even to the end of the world. And the church said, yeah. Amen. It says he'll never leave us. It says he's always there. And as we're here tonight, inside here, outside there, and all the places where we're hearing the word of God together, thank God that unchanging Christ is still here. It's here in his word. It's here in his wonders. It's there in his marvelous manifestation. And it's here in his might. Because he has not changed. He's still the same today. He has not changed. Because God has not changed. Christ too, the very son of God, has not changed. We're coming to Psalm 102. Psalm 102. We're reading from verse 24. Psalm 102. Reading from verse 24. Telling us that our God remains the same today. And Christ, the Son of God, remains the same today. He changes not. His word changes not. His wonders do not change. His power does not change. His might does not change. His authority does not change. And his love does not change. What he did before is able to do today and willing to do today and mighty and powerful enough to do today. Psalm 102 verse 24, I said, oh my God, take me not away in the midst of thine of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations of old as thou laid the foundation of the earth. And the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shall endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shall thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same. Our God, thou art the same. Our creator, thou art the same. Our Redeemer, thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. Somebody said, Amen. Amen. Malachi chapter 3, we're reading from verse 6. Malachi chapter 3, we're looking at verse 6. For I am the Lord. You see that? I am. It's not I was, and not just I will be. It's ever the same. 
because his nature does not change and his uh, power does not change and his mind does not change. He says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, the sons of Jacob are not consumed. Look at this. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, the saints of God are not consumed. I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, the members of the body of Christ are not consumed. Because upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, shall not prevail against you. We're coming to James chapter 1 verse 17. James chapter 1. Reading from verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. You understand? The promises of God are still valid today. And the prophecies of the word are still valid today. And the message of the word, the ministry of the word is still valid today. Because with him there is no variableness and there is no shadow of turning. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. We're reading from verse 8. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. It's wonderful to know this about your savior. You see your savior? And about your Lord, you see your Lord, look at this, about him, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. You'll find it the same in your life today in Jesus' name. Today, we are going to learn as we see him at work. In this chapter of John. And also we'll see him at work in the present chapter of your life. Amen. You see your life today is a particular chapter. The chapter of youth might have gone. And the chapter of childhood might have gone. Maybe you are now at the middle chapter of your life. This is a wonderful chapter. And Christ is going to walk in your life, in this chapter of your life, in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes we come to a particular chapter in our lives, and it's the chapter that we're low in the volume. A chapter when we have recession. A chapter when we're sick. It's the chapter of sickness. Or it's the chapter of sorrow. Or it's the chapter of suffering. But here we are now, in this chapter of John, and whatever chapter it is in your life, Christ is going to work. Yeah. He'll get to that chapter of your life and then he'll turn everything around and darkness will turn to light. Yeah. And you come out of the valley, you get to the mountain top. Sometimes in the chapter of defeat in somebody's life has been having this chapter of success and that chapter of victory and that chapter of triumph. All of a sudden, it comes to the chapter of defeat and everything is down. And now it comes to the chapter. Thank God we come to this chapter today. And this chapter will bring victory and triumph in your life in Jesus' name. As you come to John, that's why it's wonderful to study John. Because every chapter, God is walking and Christ is walking to tell us that all those of us who are here tonight, whatever chapter you are on today, in the chapter of your life, Christ is going to walk. Yeah. I congratulate you and I praise the Lord for you because a bright day has come. A blessed day has come. And the chapter of transformation has come in your life in Jesus' name. Once again, the title of the study tonight is The Unchanging Ministry and Miracles of Christ. Ministry of Christ, Miracles of Christ, Unchanging. The Unchanging Ministry and Miracles of Christ. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the progress and propagation of his continuous work. The progress and the propagation 
of his continuous work. He walked before, is walking today, and is going to walk in the next chapter because there is the continuity of the work of Christ. And now we see the progress that is making, and we see the propagation of that work that is continuous. Number one, the progress and the propagation of his continuous work. Number two, now, the power and the preeminence of his confirming word. Of his confirming word. When he speaks, that word is confirmed. And it's going to speak into your life today. It's going to speak into your family today. Your soul, your spirit, your heart will hear the word today. And when he speaks that word to your life, to your soul, to your heart, to your profession, to your family, that work will work and do something in your life in Jesus' name. The power and the preeminence of his confirming word. Point number three, the purpose and the persuasiveness. Not, not just persuasion, is the purpose and the persuasiveness of his confirmed word. His confirmed word. The purpose and the persuasiveness of his confirmed word. A confirmation there today. I said over there, a confirmation there today. And the word of life will be confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. Point number one. Tell me number one over there. The progress and the propagation of his continuous uh, work. We're coming to John chapter 4. And I'm reading verses 43, 44, and 45. John chapter 4. And we're looking at verses 43 all through to verse 45. Look at this. Now, after two days, he departed thence and he went into Galilee. And now it says in verse 44, for Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. Then, verse 45, when he was come into Galilee, the Galileans received him having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast. For they also went unto the feast. Look at those three verses. In verse 40, 43, now after two days, he departed thence and he went into Galilee. He left where he was and he went to another place. I titled that going on and pursuing his goal. Going on and pursuing his goal. You see, Christ had a goal. And though he stayed in a particular place, once he did what he needed to do there, he didn't sit down there. I've succeeded today. I sit down. I'm happy today. I sit down. I accomplished something there. I sit down. He accomplished. Then he departed and moved on. There are many people, they don't have goals in their lives. And they don't have a purpose in their lives. And once they have a little success, a little achievement, a little accomplishment, they sit down there. One there is going on and pursuing his goal. You are going on. You are moving on. You are climbing up. And you're making progress in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number two, number two, that's it, verse 44. Giving up men's praise and glory. Giving up men's praise and glory. Jesus understood the nature of man. And he understood the attitude of the people. And Jesus reminded them and reminded himself. And Jesus emphasized, he says that, uh, he says that a prophet has no honor in his own country. He gave up that, seeking the praise of men, the appreciation of men, and seeking the honor from men. He gave that up, number three now, in verse 45, growing in perception like the Galileans. The Galileans perceived, they knew, here is the Messiah, here is the Christ, and here is the Lord. And then they followed on, and they believed on him. Let's look at that one by one. Going on and pursuing his goal. We're looking at uh, chapter 4, verse 43. Now, after two days, he departed thence and went into 
Galilee. Look at verse 47. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him. Do you recognize something there? There is the coming out. There is a going in, always on the move. And you must think about that in your life. Look at uh, verse 54 there. In verse 54 of that same chapter, it says, This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when Jesus, when he was, tell me, come out of Judea, tell me the next word there, into Galilee. And so you understand the motion. You understand the dynamics. You understand the dynamism. And you understand the progress in the life of Christ, in the ministry of Christ. He came out of somewhere and he got to another place. And it is a new place he got to. He had this encounter of this nobleman had the encounter with him because he was going on. We're looking at Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, and we're looking at verse 23. Going out of and then coming into. Going out of the past and going into the future. Going out of what you've accomplished already. Set all that and push that aside and go to a new field. And go to a new place and go to a new assignment. Chapter 4, we're looking at verse 23. Chapter 4 of Matthew. Verse 23, and Jesus went about all Galilee. When he came out of that place, and then he went into Galilee, he went about all Galilee, and what was he doing? Teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness, and all manner of disease among the people. That's what he did, chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 35. Chapter 9 of Matthew, and we're looking at verse 35. I pray you'll make progress in your life. Yesterday is gone, and here is another day, and today, progress in Jesus' name. Yeah. Upward and forward in Jesus' name. Yeah. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. You see, he came out, and then he came in, and he wasn't idle. He was active. He was doing something. How I know that you are going to be active. You'll be doing something profitable. You look at the goal before you. Look at life before you. Life is stretched out before you. And then you do not allow any day to be idle. You come out of there and then you go into this. Luke chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 42. Luke chapter 4. Verse 42. And when it was day. He departed and went into a desert place, and the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him and stopped him, and that he should not depart from them. They said, there's good success here. There's good a, pro, a, a prospect here. Therefore, stay here with us. Look at this. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. That's why he came out of that place and then went to another. That's why he came out of that old field and then came to the new field. He said, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. And he preached in the synagogues of Galilee. He preached in the synagogues of Galilee. My question to you is, do you have any goal at all in the kingdom? You're in the kingdom at such a time like this. Do you have any goal? Any purpose? Any direction? Any place you're going? Anything you're doing? Are you moving out of and then into? Have you looked at the work of yesterday? I'll say that's concluded. Have you looked at the assignment of yesterday? Thank God that's concluded. Now I am moving on. We are going to move on in Jesus' name. We come to John chapter 4, and we're looking at verse 44. John chapter 4, verse 44. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor 
in his own country. A prophet has no honor in his own country. Here was Jesus Christ, perfect. Jesus Christ, spotless. Jesus Christ, blameless. Jesus Christ, sinless. And he had lived in that community for such a long time. He's now about 30 years of age. And in all those 30 years he lived there, they never found any fault. They never found any sin. They never found any mistake. And yet, they didn't honor him. Yet, they didn't recognize him. Yet, they didn't give him any praise or appreciation at all. Even though he had lived such a perfect, upright life, heavenly life before them, from his childhood unto adulthood, yet, no honor. If he had waited for honor, if he had waited for recognition, if he had waited for the praise of men, if he had waited for appreciation, if he had waited for recognition, he would not have done anything. You know, the people that are praise hungry, they are hungry, they are hungry for appreciation. They are hungry for honor. They are hungry for the praise of men. And if you are like that, you'll never do anything substantial. You're looking for wonderful. That is good. Aren't you great? Aren't you wonderful? Isn't that beautiful? If you wait for that, you're not going to get that every time. And Jesus knew that and he said, praise or no praise, I'm moving on. Honor or no honor, I'm moving on. Somebody there is moving on. And you're not going to wait for their appreciation. You're not going to wait for their help. And you're not going to wait for their recognition. It says men praise thee or they appreciate you not. What does that matter? The master praises thee and what are men. And let us see the attitude. We're looking at Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. And we're reading from verse 54. See how they look down on him because he lived in their community and yet he lived like no other person. In uh, Matthew chapter 13, uh, verse 54, here he tells us, and when he was coming to his own country, his own native land, the place where he had been brought up, he taught them uh, in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished, they were surprised, and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? And now they said, Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren James and, jo and Joseph and, si and Simon and Judas and his sisters are they not all with us? Whence then as this man this wisdom? 57. And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, look at this, a prophet is not without honor save in his own country and in his own house. The Savior was so near to them, they were so far from salvation. Healing was so, he, the healer was so near to them, and they were so far from his healing. And the deliverer, redeemer, was so near to them, and they were so far from his deliverance. And the one that brought invitation from heaven was near to them and it was so far from heaven. You know why? Because they didn't appreciate what Christ has brought. They saw him too much and therefore they didn't see him. They knew him too much and therefore they didn't know him. They were near to him so close and therefore they were not near unto him. It was the paradox of their own unbelief and the, par the paradox of their own life. We're looking at John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Uh, I'm reading from verse, 50, uh, from, from verse 41. John chapter 5 verse 41. John chapter 5. Tell me the verse. Are you there now? Verse 41. Read it out. One, two, three, go. I received not honor from men. You have to make up your mind that you are not looking for the praise of men and glory from men 
an honor from men, appreciation from men. Because if you're looking for that and you don't get it, you'll be disappointed. If you want them to lift you up and take you up and appreciate you, and then they belittle you, you're going to be disappointed. And your sorrow of heart and disappointment will fold your hand. You'll not want to do anything. You'll be so disappointed. You cannot rise up and do what you ought to do. But Jesus said, have a goal. Have a purpose. Have a dream. I'm moving on. I'm moving up. And I'm going there. And if I allow the praise of men to hinder me, I'll not be able to do that. Philippians chapter 2. We're looking at verse 5. Philippians chapter 2. We're reading from verse 5. Philippians chapter 2. Reading from verse 5. Let this mind be you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You have a goal, let the mind of Christ be you. You have a purpose, let the mind of Christ be you. You want something to be achieved, let the mind of Christ be you. You want to climb up to mountain top, let the mind of Christ be you. That you're not looking here and there for precision. You're not looking here and there for honor. You're not looking here and there for the praise of men. Jesus gave up men's praise and glory. Look at verse 6. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation. And he took upon him the form of his servant and was made in the likeness of men. Now let's come back to John chapter 4. In John chapter 4, we're looking at verse 45. John chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 45. And when he was come into Galilee, remember now, he left where he was in Judea. He had accomplished the work there. He had done an important thing over there. He had accomplished the purpose of the Lord. He had pursued his own goal. And he had achieved that goal. And he knew that was settled. And he knew that was done. Because that was settled and that was done. He said now he was going to go to Galilee. I pray you'll keep on going. I said I pray you'll keep on moving. And as you keep on moving, I pray that the purpose of the Lord will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. And now in verse 45, he was coming to Galilee. And the Galileans received him. Look at that. What other people did not recognize, they recognized the Galileans received him having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast. For they also went unto the feast. And then let's look at these Galileans because they had a growing perception growing perception and i pray that this same perception the lord will give to you in jesus name and you know the problem of the pharisees and the problem of uh, those uh, people that were looking down on galilee and they didn't understand look at chapter 7 we're looking at verse 52 chapter 7 of john verse 52 here is what he said let me back up to verse 45 then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man speak like this man. They had actually sent these officers to Jesus to arrest him. And when they got there, Jesus Christ was addressing the people, and his message came with power, came with authority, and came with anointing, and it came with heavenly unction. And then they left that place, they didn't arrest Christ, and they asked them, Where is where is he? Why have you not brought him? And they answered and they said, Never man speak like this man. Then answered them, the Pharisees, Are you also deceived? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? But these people who knoweth not the law are cursed. Nicodemus says unto them, He that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, does our Lord judge any man before it hear him and know what he doeth? Verse 52, here is what I want you to see. Then answered, and said, they answered and said unto him, 
Art thou also, tell me, of Galilee? They said, are ye of Galilee, those ignorant people? Are ye of Galilee, those ignoramuses? Are you of Galilee, those people that know nothing? Are you of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth, tell me, no prophet. They were so sure. Out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. Can I show you something? That these Galileans, they perceived this is the Messiah. They perceived this is the Christ. They perceived this is the Savior. This is the Lord. Do you know that all the disciples, apostles of Christ, except Judas Iscariot, were Galileans? Because those Galileans, they recognized while the other people were belittling Christ and they were looking away from Christ and they were saying it could not be, no prophet comes out of Galilee. All those Galileans, they started believing, yes, I believe, yes, I believe, yes, I believe. And eventually, 11 apostles came out of Galilee. Apostles will come out of your family. Yeah. Out of your local church. Yeah. While the other people are saying they don't believe, you will believe in Jesus' name. Yeah. And look at this, Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 11. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Now the angels appeared unto these men, unto these apostles, and unto these disciples, after Christ had been taken away from them, going to heaven, which also said, ye men of Galilee, these apostles, all the apostles of Galilee, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Look at chapter 2. We're looking at chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. And it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were seated. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with all the tongues as the spirit gave them utterance and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews devout men out of every nation of heaven and now it says when this was noised abroad the multitude came together and they were confounded because that every man at them speak in his own language. We're coming to verse 7. Look at verse 7. And the world amazed and they marveled, saying one to another, Tell me, behold, tell me, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? All those people that receive the power, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Galileans, Galileans, while others were despising, while others were looking down, while others were saying, no, it cannot be, that cannot be Christ, that cannot be the Messiah, that cannot be the Lord, because he said, you know, he said, having all this interaction with the Galileans, does any prophet come out of Galilee? And those Galileans, they started believing, I believe, I believe, somebody there tonight, I believe. Somebody there tonight, I believe. I believe Jesus is my savior. Tell me. I believe Jesus is my healer. Tell me aloud. I believe Jesus is my redeemer. While the other people were saying they don't believe, the Galileans believed. And then they had a perception that no other person had. And because of that, see the wonderful things that happened to them. Don't follow the people that are looking down and the people that are not looking at Jesus as they ought to look at him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and have the growing perception where these Galileans, the power of the Holy Ghost, will come upon your life in Jesus' name. We'll come to point number two now. The power and the preeminence. The power and the preeminence of his confirming word. We're coming to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 46. John chapter 4. 
We're reading from verse 46. So, Jesus came into Cana of Galilee, where he had made water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him, you'll come to Christ, and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. You see, he recognized that Jesus has the power, the power to heal, the power to destroy the enemy. Oh, would your soul annoy the power even to raise the dead? In verse 48, and then said Jesus unto him, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The noble man says unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. Come down before my child dies. In verse 50, Jesus says unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. The Lord is saying to you tonight, Go thy way, your body is healed. Go thy way, your mountain is removed. Go thy way, your family liveth in Jesus' name. And the man, and the man, and the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. Look at those verses once again. There are three things we're looking at there. Number one, the prayer of the man. The prayer of the man. The supplication. The petition. He came to Jesus Christ and he besought him. He said, I have a problem. My son is about to die. Come with me. Come down. Because my son is about to die and heal him. The prayer of the man. Point number two, the purpose of his miracles. The purpose of his miracles. Because Jesus said, except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The signs and the wonders have a purpose. The miracles have a purpose. Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe the purpose of his miracle. And then, number three there, go thy way, thy son liveth. The pronouncement of our maker. The pronouncement of our maker. A pronouncement is coming upon your life today. It will turn your life around. It will destroy the works of the devil. It will set you free. Somebody there said it will set you free. It will save your soul. It will sanctify your spirit. It will fill you with the power of God. The pronouncement of our maker. Look at verse 46 again. In verse 46, so Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he had made water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea, into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him. He went unto him and besought him. He asked of him. He prayed to him. He pleaded with him that he would come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. That's prayer. You will pray. I said you will pray. And as you pray, the Lord will answer your prayer. He's still answering prayers today. He's still saving souls today. He's still sanctifying believers today. He's still healing the sick today. Man or woman, come and make your petition before the Lord. And the Lord will hear your prayer in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15 verse 22. Matthew chapter 15 verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out. Of the same coasts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. You see here, there's another person, a woman, 
and came to the Lord. And you see, you see something here you know, uh, between uh, these uh, two people. The centurion, he left the sick person at home and came to Jesus Christ. And this nobleman left uh, the son at home and came to Jesus Christ. And this Phoenician woman also left the daughter at home and came to Jesus because distance is no barrier to Jesus. Whatever that sick person is, once Jesus makes a pronouncement upon that sickness, that sickness will vanish away. You know, the word of God is here, it's coming to you from here, and it gets to you there. We don't have to touch you, we don't have to push you, we don't have to anoint you, we don't have to pour oil on you. As the word comes to you, the power of God will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 7 of Luke. Luke chapter 7, and I'm reading from verse 2 to verse 4. Luke chapter 7, and we're reading from verse 2. And you'll find out that as uh, people came those days, they came to him. They came to him. And as they came, the power of God was released on them. You have come tonight. And the power of God will be released on you in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 7 verse 2. And a certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die at the point of death. No matter how critical your case is, the power of God will roll away that crisis tonight in Jesus' name. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews beseeching him, you see that? Beseeching him that he would come um, and heal his servant. Uh, what we have learned from these people is this. After hearing of Christ, that he heals. Hearing of Christ, that he forgives. Hearing of Christ, that he saves. Hearing of Christ, that he delivers. Hearing of Christ, that he sanctifies. Hearing of Christ, that he breaks every yoke. Hearing of Christ, that he can baptize and he does baptize in the Holy Ghost. After hearing of Christ, that he provides and strengthens. Then we must pray to him and beseech him and plead with him and do for us what we want to him to do. And tonight, as you pray, tonight, I said as you pray, Tonight, I said, as you open your mouth and you tell the Lord, Oh Lord, look at my need, look at my challenge, and look at my circumstance. Everything is going to change. Because he answers prayer. I rejoice with you there tonight. Am I talking to somebody there? I said, I rejoice with you tonight. And those of you are coming for the first time today, you come to the powerhouse. And you come to the Mount of Transfiguration. Something great will happen to you tonight in Jesus' name. We come to the second theme here. We're looking at chapter 4, and I'm looking at verse 48. Look at this. In John chapter 4, verse 48, it says, Jesus said unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. Look at that. Except ye see. Jesus said, I'll show you something. You will see something. I said you will see something. Once he told him, except you see signs and wonders, it means that Jesus was uh, already uh, to reveal signs and wonders unto him. It's not about, uh, you know, will he do it, will he not do it? I'm sure he will do it. Will he do it tonight? Will he not do it tonight? I'm sure he will do it tonight. Because he already said, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. But that tells us something. It tells us about the purpose of the signs and wonders. The purpose of the miracles. The purpose of the healing. Except you see, you will not believe. He wanted him to believe, so he was going to show him something. Do you know that that is the purpose? of the miracle of the Lord. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 2. John chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 2. It says, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, teacher, master, we know thou art that thou art uh, thou art a teacher come from heaven for no man can do these miracles except God be with him. Already Nicodemus said, 
I believe you're a teacher come from God because we'll see the miracles. The purpose of the miracles is to point them to Christ and to know that he is different and to know that here is the Savior and to know that here is the teacher come from heaven. The purpose of his miracles. Look at chapter 6, verse 2. Chapter 6, we're reading from verse 2. John 6, verse 2. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased. That's it. Except you see miracles, ye shall not or ye will not believe. And these people believed already to a level because they followed him when they saw the miracles. Look at verse 14. Then those men that he is the man who had seen uh, him do those things. When they had seen uh, the miracles that Jesus did said, this is of a truth that prophet which shall come into the world. They had seen the miracles because of that. They believe this is he that shall come into the world. Chapter 9 verse 16. John chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 16. It says, therefore, said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. They had their own laws and their own rules, and they had all their own ceremonies, and they had all the things they were thinking about, that uh, they were say, okay, if he keeps that Sabbath, we will know that he's a man of God. We know that if he keeps our tradition, we'll know that he's a man of God. We'll know that if he follows all the rules and regulations that these parties have laid down, we will know that he belongs to God. And so they said, we know. This man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath. Look at the other part now. Other said, look at this. Other said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They said, you say this man is not of God. How could he do all these miracles if he were not of God? Because it led them to consider that Jesus Christ must be the son of God because of those miracles that he did. Look at chapter 10. Chapter 10 verse 41. Chapter 10, verse 41, and many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all the all things that John spake of this man were true, and many believed on him there. You see the purpose of the miracles, except you, except you see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. We're looking at John chapter 20, verse 30. John chapter 20, we're looking at verse 30 and many other signs, many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which were not written in this book, but these are written that she might believe. You see that? Many other signs, many other wonders, many other miracles and many other healings did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written here, but these are written that she might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing he might have life through his name. The reason why those miracles are performed, why those signs and wonders are given, and why the healing is uh, given is so that we will believe. Thank God, Jesus is my healer. I said, Jesus is my healer. You'll be your healer tonight in Jesus' name. Your deliverer tonight in Jesus' name is the power of God in man. And he'll manifest that power in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Except, except, except Jesus' signs and wonders, ye will not believe the purpose of his miracles. In Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 3. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Look at verse 4. God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will, confirming the word with signs following. Let's come back now to John. 
chapter 4. John chapter 4, we're looking at verse 50. John chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 50. The pronouncement of our maker. The pronouncement of our maker. Here is Jesus, and he's the maker of the world. He's the creator. Here is Jesus, our Messiah. Here is Jesus, our Lord. Here is Jesus, without him was nothing made that was made. Is the word personified. He is our maker. Look at this. We're looking at the pronouncement of our maker. John chapter 4, verse 15. Jesus says unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. Look at that. He didn't even pray. Look at that. He didn't even say, Okay, I'll come home with you and touch the boy. Look at him. He didn't give him a bottle of oil. Look at him. He didn't give him a bottle of holy water, as they say. Look at him here. He didn't give him a rod and say, Go and lay this on him. He just spoke the word, pronouncement, and it's coming upon your life tonight. I say pronouncement is coming upon your life tonight because it says, Go thy way, go thy way, thy son liveth. Who is this talking? Look at chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1 and see the identity of the one that is pronouncing this. In John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. That's our maker. All things were made by him. That's our creator. All things were made by him. That's the mighty one. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the light and the life was the light of men look at verse 14 it says and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld this glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth and since that's a maker all you need to do is pro to pronounce the word and when you hear that pronounced word that pronouncement power will enter into your life Healing will come into your life. And every mountain in your life will move away in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 8. Matthew chapter 8 verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. Speak, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Speak the word only. All I need is a pronouncement, the pronouncement of the maker, and it will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Verse 13, and Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Delivered in the self same hour. Signs and wonders in the self same hour. Miracles when? Power when? And the moving of your mountain when? In this self same hour. How is that? Why is that? Why did it happen like that? We're looking at Psalm 107. Psalm 107. And I'm reading from verse 20. Psalm 107. We're looking at verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. The maker. He sent his word and healed them. A creator. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Chapter 33, Psalm 33. And we're looking at verse 6. That word is still powerful today. That word is still mighty today. Psalm 33, reading from verse 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Verse 9, for he spake and it was done. Amica, he spake and tell me. 
it was done. And remember, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And remember, God says, I am God, I change not. He speak and it was done. He commanded and it's stood fast. It's stood fast. That word is coming to your life tonight. That word is pronounced against your problem tonight. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. And we're reading from verse 11. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It shall not return unto him void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the things whereon I sent it. It's your turn tonight. I said it's your turn tonight. It will be done in Jesus' name. Christ, the Messiah, is our maker. As well as our master. As well as the one that moves every mountain out of our lives. His word is creative. His word is powerful. His word is mighty. It speaks directly and it is done. He speaks through his messengers and it is done. Believe tonight and he's still speaking. He's speaking against your problem. Yeah. His word in your life tonight will be the word of power. Yeah. There will be a performance that of what he said in Jesus' name. Yeah. We're coming to Luke. Luke chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 32. Luke chapter 4. Verse 32, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Has he changed? His word was, his, was with power. Can he do it tonight? Can he do it in your life? Verse 36, and they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commandeth. The unclean spirits and he commanded the unclean spirits and uh, they come out. They have to come out. I said they have to come out. I praise God for you tonight because it will solve your problem. It will move your mountain. It will destroy the works of the devil because it's your maker. It's your master. It's your messiah. It's your redeemer. And when he speaks, it is done. Chapter 1, chapter 1 of Luke, verse 45. Chapter 1 of Luke, verse 45. This is your verse. I said, this is your verse. Say, this is my verse. Verse 45. Blessed is she that believed. Blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. I'm going to read that again. Blessed are you that believe tonight. I said blessed are you that believe tonight. For there shall be a performance. Say there shall be a performance. Say there shall be a performance. Of those things that you have told me. I say it out aloud. A performance in your life in Jesus' name. Tears are wiped away. Sorrow taken away. And all those things that bother you in your heart, the problem is solved tonight in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. The purpose and the persuasiveness of his confirmed word. The purpose and the persuasiveness of of his confirmed word. We're coming to chapter 4. John chapter 4. Reading from verse 51. John chapter 4. Reading from verse 51. And as he was now going down. His servants met him. And told him. Saying. Tell me. Thy son liveth. That's a confirmation. You are going to have a confirmation. The doctors will confirm it. Yeah. Medical tests will confirm it. Yeah. 
your body will confirm it. Somebody will look at you and say, what happened to you? You look brighter. You look stronger. You look healthy. There will be a confirmation in Jesus' name. You are not crying anymore. You are not sorrowful anymore. And they say, where did you go? I went to Jesus. And Jesus taught me. And Jesus transformed my life. And Jesus turned my family around. And Jesus gave me that thing I've been asking for. It is done in Jesus' name. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. He inquired of them the hour when he began to, I mean, hold on, hold on, look up here. He thought it will be gradual. He thought it will start now and then little by little, little by little, little by little, it will be done. And so he said, when did he begin to amend, began to amend? And then they said, uh-uh, this one is not gradual. This one is instantaneous. This one is get and go. This one is receive it now, now. They said, and they said unto him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. The fever left him. The demon left him. The problem left him. And the mountain went away. So the father knew that it was at the same hour. In the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed in his house. Himself believed in his house. He said, If Jesus can do this, I give my heart, I give my life, I give my soul. My whole family will belong to the Lord. Looks like I'm, I'm hearing you say tonight, Now I belong to the Lord. I will never leave the Lord. I will never forsake the Lord. If Jesus can do this my whole life, from now till I die, and from now till I see him face to face, I belong to Jesus, and they believed on him. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did. He did it before, he's going to do it again. Today, this is again the second miracle. Tonight, this is again the second miracle. In your life, this is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea and into Galilee. You came out of your house tonight and you came over here to Deep and Life Bible Church and you came to meet the Lord, the miracle worker. Your Savior, your Lord, your Redeemer. And this again today, he will do it in your life. What are you there? Will you invite him in? Will you allow him to do it? Why don't you stand up and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, again today. Oh Lord, again today. Oh Lord, again today. Oh Lord, again today. Tell him what you need. Tell him what you want. Tell him what the problem is. If you are not born again yet, tell the Lord. Tell the Lord, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. You died for me. Lord, I believe. You sacrificed for me. Lord, I believe. You died so that I can live. Lord, I believe. I confess my sins. I turn away from my sins. I turn to Jesus Christ, the light of the world. It's my savior tonight. It's my redeemer tonight. It's the one, the light changer tonight. It will change your life tonight. It will turn everything around your life tonight. Look at him. Look at him. He's your savior. Look at him. He's your savior. He wants to save you. He wants to save you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to take your sin away. Jesus has the power. The power to forgive. And the power to pardon every sin of your life. He has the power to save. He has the power to deliver. He has the power to heal. He has the power to roll your mountains away. He has the power. The power to rebuke the enemy in your life. And the power to set you free. The power to set you free. Let him do it. Let him do it. He wants to do it right now. He wants to wipe all those tears away. He wants to take all those problems away. He wants to take all those challenges away. He wants to bless you tonight. He wants to bless you tonight. He wants to confirm his word in your life.
Confirm the healing in your life. Confirm the signs and the wonders in your life. There's a manifestation tonight. There's a performance tonight. And he wants to confirm that tonight. It's still the same. It's still the same healing. It's still the same saving. It's still the same delivering. It's still the same rolling mountains away. It's still the same transforming lives. It's still the same breaking every yoke in every life. He'll do it tonight. He'll do it tonight. He'll do it tonight. And the reason he's doing it is so you can give yourself wholeheartedly without reservation unto him. And there's a confirmation in your life tonight, a confirmation in your family tonight, a confirmation in your body tonight, a confirmation in your soul tonight, a confirmation for the purpose of God to be fulfilled in your life tonight. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Blessed is he. Blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things that are told him or told her from the Lord. He said, we'll forgive you. Blessed are you when you forgive. He said, he will save you. Blessed are you when you believe. He said, he will cleanse your heart. Blessed are you when you believe. He said, he will write your name in the book of life. Blessed are you when you believe. He said he'll make impossibilities possible. He'll take all the mountains away. He said he'll knock that devil out of your life, out of your business, out of your family. Blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things that were told him, told her from the Lord. Tonight, a night of manifestation. Tonight, a night of performance. Tonight, a night of confirmation. Lord, I believe there'll be a confirmation. Lord, I believe there'll be a performance. Lord, I believe there'll be a manifestation right there. He saves, he transforms, he changes lives, he cleanses, he sanctifies, he empowers, he fills with the Holy Ghost, he takes mountains away, he silences the devil. He calms the fever. He sets the captive free. In Jesus' name we pray. And the believing people of God said, Let's bow down, eyes closed. You know, tonight, He'll forgive every sin you ever committed in your life. All the guilt, all the condemnation, He'll roll away. He will write your name in the book of life. And He'll put eternal life in your soul. And when you leave this world, you'll spend eternity with God in heaven. 
The great deal is coming to you today. And what a wonderful thing. Heads bowed and eyes closed. You want all those sins you've committed since you were born until this very hour. You want everything to be forgiven. You want him to save your soul. You want him to give you salvation. You want him to give you eternal life. And you want all the guilt, all the condemnation, all the pressure of sin and the bad habit to be broken in your life. Wonderful time for you tonight. Just raise up that hand and we're praying together and it will forgive you. Wonderful, wonderful. Raise it up very well. Raise it up very well. He's going to do it tonight. And then you have the joy of salvation in you. That's what this man got with his whole family outside, inside. Anywhere you are now, you are hearing my, the sound of my voice. Just raise up that hand. Raise it up again. Raise it up again. And say, Lord, I confess my sins to you. Say that to the Lord. And say, Lord, I turn away from my sins. Say that to the Lord. Say, Lord, I receive you as my personal Savior tonight. I believe. I believe. Say that to the Lord. I believe that you died for me on the cross of Calvary and because of that my sins are forgiven tonight. Tell him and tell him I receive you now as my personal Lord and Savior. Say thank you. Thank you. Tell him thank you. I am saved. My sins are forgiven. I have eternal life. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. Keep up that hand. Keep up that hand and pray for you, Father. In Jesus' name. I thank you for all those who have responded and they have handed over their heart, their life, their soul unto you and all the sins of the past. They're sorry about them and they have repented and they're saying, Lord, give them the grace not to go back to them and they're receiving forgiveness and salvation from you tonight. Save them in Jesus' name. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Let the joy of salvation come to their hearts right now. Confirm it, confirm it, confirm it in every heart. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And now your sicknesses will vanish away. And let my give me a good, good amen. Mountains will roll away. Headache will roll away. Infirmities will go away. All the works of Satan will be destroyed in your life tonight. Your son will be healed. Your daughter will be healed. Your wife will be healed. Your husband will be healed. You have anybody you are concerned about in the hospital or at home? You remember them now. And as we pray, the Lord is touching you here. And the Lord is touching them over there. Miracles of miracles. Miracle inside. Miracle outside. Miracle in the church. Miracle in the hospital. Miracle everywhere. Where are you candidate for miracle? Candidate for signs and wonders. Candidate for healing. Candidate for a move, mountain moving prayer tonight. Raise up that hand and remember tonight, confirmation. Somebody shout confirmation. Somebody shout confirmation. In your life, confirmation. In your body, confirmation. In your family, confirmation. In your place of work, confirmation. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight because we know, number one, there's a pronouncement. And I pronounce in the life of your children, I command sickness, come out in Jesus' name. That infirmity I command, come out in Jesus' name. And that work of the devil, every plan, the heavenly Father has not planted in your life, be uprooted right now. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Receive your miracle. Lord, I pray there will be a definite touch tonight. A definite miracle tonight. A definite healing tonight. Confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. Go back home and be healed. Go back home, you are healed. Go back home, that relative is healed. Go back home, your life is blessed. Go back home, your mountain is removed. It is done. Confirmation, it is done. Manifestation, it is done. Performance, it is done. Receive and enjoy your miracle in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because we know it has happened. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We know it has happened. Confirm it in every life.
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Raise your voice to the Lord and thank God. There raise your voice to the Lord and thank God. There is done a performance, a manifestation, and there is a confirmation. Thank God you have received. Thank God you have received. <laughs>